So it does our. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, shit. What? Oh, wait. Never mind. Oh, it says Mike is muted. That's just mine. Your mic's muted. Well, no, because of like the way we have to set it up with the multiple tabs and to get this. It's fine. Right. <laughs> Cats up's nine. Yeah. It's getting to a point where I can't count that high yeah, anymore. I know. We're going to have to like. Sorry. That was a week. Chill. You're taking the extra sip away. Yeah. Something about saving money. And volumes like that's really gonna change much. Fucking embarrassing. Yeah, the patented extra sip. I'm sad now. Right. Yeah, the pop is gonna be less. Sorry. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Oh well, it's still delicious. Mm -hmm. I had a sector berry in a while. I saw that in there. So we got that, and then a little manjo white claw. Yeah, watermelon. Yeah. I saw it. <laughs> I saw a dirty meme about guys drinking White Claws the other day. I kind of wanted to order one at lunch. A White Claw? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I feel weird about ordering White Claws. Yeah. I don't know why. Mm. I really shouldn't. No. I mean, it's a, it's a stereotypically girly drink, but that means nothing. Yeah, it's not like... They're delicious. Cosmopolitan <laughs> <laughs> Gutter crew coming in. I'll have a Cosmo, please. I'll take a white claw with ice. Right. <laughs> your pinky. There's no laws when you're drinking claws. I was, I was so hungover today. Yeah? Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was okay. It's been a while, so. Yep. I mean, I feel like every time I have to talk about it, I'm hungover. Like, every time I'm like... <laughs> We're going to Pants Parents over recording Ethan's song over, but it <laughs> literally does not happen that way. Right. <laughs> it just somehow happens like every night before we record. I know. Oh, well. Well, we didn't even record last time because we were too fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, last time we were too hungover and we didn't record. Yeah. What did we even do? Oh, we went, went out, we went out with the, yeah, we went Goldie's birthday. Yeah. Happy late birthday, Happy late Goldberg. Birthday. Waylay birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday to you then while we're at it. Happy birthday to me, Brandon. It's pooping. Brandon. Happy birthday to Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your mouth or butt? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, listeners, Brandon is pooping over there. Like over there. Like not like right here. He's got his own mic. Yeah. He's making Brandon noises. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a while since we recorded. January 18th oh boy. is when we put out Cats Up's 8. And it's April? April 15th. Three months. Yeah. Carry the one. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Monday will be three months since we put out our last Cats Up. But, like, it's cool. Like, oh, nothing's been going on. We've just, like, <laughs> you know. Life. Boring. Stuff. Well, you've had a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I was being sarcastic. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> no. yeah. we did it really well. We did it a little too well. Oh, okay, shit. Yeah. yeah, um, a lot of stuff going on. yeah, things have been bonkers the last three months. Um, I mean, yeah, just thinking of like all of the things that have been going on that I've had happen since the last time we recorded, mm -hmm. and that I'm not even going to comment on a lot of it because. <laughs> Legally, uh, it, yeah, legally, I'm probably not at liberty to comment on a fair amount of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, there's definitely been a lot of things going on. Um, yeah, I've, I've just been, I got sick. Yeah. I got my wisdom teeth out. It's true. That was an adventure. Yeah. Did I tell you about like getting put under and stuff? No. <clears throat> so I thought. I've had laughing gas before, but they gave you like, you know, the pump, pump you full of laughing gas before they knock you out, kind of calm the nerves. Right? Yeah, yeah, you just break the seal enough that you don't get the cream. Yeah, right. 
But anyways, they... <laughs> kidding, kids, <laughs> don't do whippets. It's bad for you. <laughs> anyways, yeah, uh, she put the IV in, and I then left, and like I could see the, the monitor right there with everything is like uh, it said IV administered at this time. Blah, blah. So I thought in my looped up brain that the, I was waiting to fall asleep. And like 12 minutes had passed, and I'm like, Jesus, maybe I'm too good at this stuff, you know? <laughs> so the lady walks back in, and I'm like, when is this stuff supposed to knock me out? Because, like, I I mean, I feel messed up, but you know, I'm not going to pass out anytime soon. She's like, oh, no, just wait until Dr. Kim gets here. He'll give you the good <laughs> stuff. And so he he came in a little bit later, and um, I don't know, he was talking – Oh, he said he was going to shave my... He's like, you're going to wake up, your beard's going to be gone. It's in the way. <laughs> or, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fuck it will. Just, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> we'll just cover it in Vaseline. Again. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, whatever. He's like, I said, I think I told him, well, you're just jealous or something. He's like, yeah, I can only grow a Fu Manchu. Which, well, and then I just said, well, I bet you can grow a real good Fu Manchu. Which... Yeah, I think he's okay in my messed up state, but he is Asian, so that might be a little racist. But I was being sincere. You were, like, giving him a genuine, genuine compliment. Yes. I think he could grow a very good Fumanchu. Yeah. But that was the last thing I remembered. <laughs> so <laughs> he took that chance to just... I was out. <laughs> I didn't even know I was out. Maybe he fine. thought you were being racist and was like, go to sleep. Yeah, he didn't really lie. I do remember that. I remember <laughs> feeling kind of awkward. He's like... Mm. <laughs> but he brought it up so I don't know oh. <laughs> but anyways yeah like I was told that I was going to be super confused not know where I yeah. was all this stuff but I woke up the only thing that confused me was my heart monitor was on this finger when I fell asleep and it was on this finger when I woke up <laughs> okay. so I was just like doing the cliche druggy thing you know, like looking at my hands but hey Brandon what up, dude? Hey. All right. Check you later. Yeah. Good to see you. What are you yeah. waddling a little? I need to lay down. You know, I'm hurt. <laughs> Go take a shower. I'm sweaty. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah was just, that was the only thing. And then, I don't know. Like, the lady walked me out with the arm. And I'm like, I can walk. Like, I'm fine. It's just. <laughs> they pushed me out in, like, a wheelchair after, like, a. <laughs> yeah, they were like, like yeah. they're like, nope, that's how we do it. We wheel you out to the curb. And then on the yeah. way home, I'm like uh, taking pictures of my bloody mouth yep. and sending them to you guys. Yeah, I stuff. remember seeing that. Yep. Laughing gas <clears throat> is a lot of fun, though. Yeah. I remember laying there being like, man, if this is what dying feels like, <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> this is sweet. Yep. And then I remember thinking also, like, how crazy it was that that stuff is legal like i am on a legal medically induced trip right now this is awesome yeah <laughs> you know but yeah yeah it was fun I mean, it was fun until it wasn't because then i sat down i got home sat down and i was like well, i'm just gonna play some red dead redemption you know and yep. then pan went to get my prescriptions and she came back and i was just like messed up you would have to wake me up to change my gauze out. And that sucked because the gauze sticks to your gums. And mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I got to keep my teeth. Yeah, so probably make some out of them. A necklace. Something. That's yeah. That I have mine somewhere. That's what I always actually <laughs> wanted to do with mine. I wanted to take. Um, I've got one that's like really good. Like it's just like perfect shape, and I wanted to like soak it like. You know, like bleach or peroxide or something for like a week just to like and then clean it just get it like soup and then put a small like like a little eye screw or something in it and mm -hmm. make like a necklace out of it or something i don't know <clears throat> yeah so you kept your did you keep all your baby teeth no oh no i don't have those and things i'm weird because i have a jar of all my teeth uh yeah the ones that i didn't swallow yeah <laughs> you know while you're sleeping yeah i don't have those no hmm. maybe i am weird <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, you don't do that, but a like, little bit, you know. I don't know. It's cool. I got a little jar, of all <laughs> a little, little jar teeth. teeth and, yeah, it's kind of neat. Okay. Tiny. I have um, somewhere. I have my. I don't know if I have. So I had five wisdom teeth pulled. I had like all four pulled 
And then like a year and a half later, something like that, I had like a fifth one come in. And <clears throat> yeah, it's not super common, but I guess it's not super rare either. Um, but yeah, so that one I have somewhere. Not sure where it's at. Is that like an inbred thing or something? Yeah, it's yeah, it's from the generations of inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> I got five wisdom teeth, mom. <laughs> mama, why are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. So, uh, so <laughs> we figured that out. Um shit. and somewhere I have the um somewhere I have like the plate and the pins and stuff for my leg. Well, that's good. When I broke that. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, that would be kind of cool to do something with. Like that. that plate is heavy. Like I was like, yeah, like surprisingly heavy. And it's not, you know, it's like I don't know, six inches long, and it, I don't know, three quarters of an inch wide, eighth inch thick, something like that. Hmm. Was um, it made out of lead or I, something? Probably lead. <laughs> That's what you want. Well, I mean, that it moves, you know, like yeah. a little bit. Yeah, mercury. <laughs> That's why I can't read good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. What? I think I, kicked, the chair? I think I kicked that tripod. So. Ooh. <clears throat> uh, so what else happened? Uh, yeah, I got my wisdom teeth out. Um, Not too much, I guess. Just working. I'm siding now full time. Yeah. So I don't have to be foreman anymore. <laughs> okay. It's technically, I still am, but yeah, <laughs> I'm a lead man for another crew, and it's actually going really good. Nice song, something new, and it's a good crew. So, uh, and then last weekend, I suppose last weekend would probably be the biggest thing I've done since the last podcast, just because it's been crappy outside. Yeah. Geez, what are you gonna do besides sit on the weekend, sit at home? And <laughs> right. It's cold and just junk and I spent all week outside so because I was just telling you I think for the last two weeks like three quarters of my awake time I've spent outside yeah so it's just tired but so yeah last weekend I it was gonna be warm enough to try out my new hammock that I got last fall never got a chance to try it so I went up to help Jonathan make maple syrup up on the homestead yeah the first night he got down to 17 degrees, which it was still, there was no wind at all, but I had my first layer was a bed mat and then I had Buffalo hide, like what I did in Iowa. And then I brought a sleeping bag. So I didn't have to pack in. So like I could just walk to the car and grab all this crap. So I was like, well, fuck it, whatever. Right. Bring a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I set up on the hillside above our property. So it was really cool. I could look out over everything. But then, okay, so yeah. Bed mat, buffalo hide, sleeping bag, puffle, 40-degree blanket, and then a bear hide. And then I used a coyote pelt for my pillow okay. with my coat up above it. But canine fur doesn't uh, collect condensation. Hmm. It's something about the oils in it. So I was okay. like, well, that'll, I can breathe on it, whatever. It's not going to get icy. Because that first night when I woke up in the morning, uh yeah, my blankets and everywhere that I'd breathe, been breathing all night, yeah. there was ice. Yeah. My boots were frozen solid to the ground. I had to, like, <laughs> break them free. Mm -hmm. So it was an experience. And then, uh, but I did not have to pee the first night. So that is always a win. Right. Sleeping in a hammock, especially covered in all that crap to get yeah. out of there. It's tough to rock one when you're in a hammock. Right. Second night was a different story. <laughs> it was warmer, but the wind picked up. Yep. So it was blowing across the lake, which there's still 17 inches of ice on the lake. Yep. So that was chilly. Nice and cold. Right. That, it got chilly in the morning, but it wasn't horrible. But I, I tested the old lean and pee because I had to pee. So I was talking to Pan. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. You know, I'll be, <laughs> you know, I got I to. Gotta, see if I can pull it off this lean and pee because I'm not getting out of this thing. She's like, okay, well, good luck. So, <laughs> so hey, night, love you. Hung up. It's like, <clears throat> for those of you who aren't familiar with the lean and pee, yeah. you open, you can, well, you can maybe do it if you're a lady, I guess, but that would be, I would be Oof. so impressed. Yeah. Considering how hard it is to do as a, uh, 
mail, you know. Right, with outdoor plumbing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you open your hammock, and then you just kind of... <laughs> right, lean, you lean and hang. And... Yeah, and just kind of flop her off yeah. and see you do your business. Yeah. There's two reasons that's hard, because the <laughs> hammock wants to go back. Yep. You know, uh, it's cold, so I had, like, three layers on. Yeah. Pulling dingy out of the <laughs> That's right. the worst part about wind, working outside in the winter is pulling three inches of dick out of six inches of clothes. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, so then you have, uh, the other part that's hard is your bladder is not relaxed. No. It does not want to go. So it hurts. You got to like, force it. You know, no, you're doing this because I ain't getting out. Did it. Felt good about it. You know, yeah, and uh, called Pan right away. <laughs> like, I did I, it. I did it. It was successful. She's like, "Oh, okay, good for you." <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever. So I hung up. So I'm big. Like, Man, I'm thirsty. So I reached outside of my hammock into my stuff sack. We put the hammock inside when you fold it up. Yeah. My water bottle and knife and stuff are out there, covered in piss. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> oh. Yuck. <laughs> so I just, I just mm -hmm. like wiped it off in my sleeping bag. <laughs> right, yeah, what do you do? <laughs> like, it's sterile. But, <laughs> right. At that I, point, you're like, yeah, I'm I'm take care of this. I'm going to get out. Right. <laughs> you're not going to get out. Right. So I took care of it, whatever. Wake <laughs> up. And, and I didn't call Pan to tell her. I didn't yeah. call her to tell home because I was ashamed. <laughs> right. So then I, I did it. I peed outside. On my bag. Later that night, I had to do it again, but this time I pulled the stuff sack in, did the whole same process. That was 100% successful. There you go. So now I've got to pull the stuff sack in. So I wonder, <sighs> so I'm wondering is if there's a way you could get the stuff sack, depending on how much weight is still in there, it's probably pretty light at that point, though. It doesn't weigh anything. Yeah. And like, you it's know, if there's like, like next to nothing in there. Well, I mean, you had like your water bottle and stuff yeah. like that, but like, I was thinking if you could, so you're mm -hmm. lean, you're laying there, unzip, lean out here. Like if there was a way to get her, like as a counterweight, like hang it off, basically like your your ass end mm, to tilt the hammock. Right, so it'll hold you back there. It's like you, you know, you barely even have to lean. You just kind of have to like roll and just be like, ah, uh, good. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about the <laughs> center of gravity in and right. up. I don't know. Ass over There's teacup. Definitely some tweaking. Be yeah, but I mean, when it gets warm enough, uh, you don't need as much stuff in the hammock, so you can just get out. And go back well, yeah, and get back in. Like it's not, you it's can. not the end of the world. <laughs> well, I mean, what are you gonna do if you wake up in bed? You're not just gonna like lean off the side of your bed and piss all over the floor. Well, well you're not gonna tell anybody about it if you do. Fair enough. You're right. All right, fine. I don't know. It, it, it was, it was all fun. <laughs> the, the whole experience was fun. We got 10 pints of maple syrup. Oof, all right. So that's pretty good. That's some extremely good maple syrup. Nice. It's very viscous. That means like tacky, right? Viscous. Tacky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Syrup. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like thick. 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 Instead With two of C's. Watery. You know, yeah. a lot of times natural maple syrup is fairly watery. Yeah. But all no, this stuff was not. Down with the thickness. Right. Nice. Sat around the campfire, played a bunch of music, and it was fun. Got to see my cousin. Good, good times. Time. Fuck yeah. Good time. Johnny almost got nailed by a, a a log about this long. Oh, I'd say about that wide. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> so it's so. That when I went out there for so like enough that getting hit by this is going to be problematic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. it would have sucked, right? But I think I talked about it on here when I went up for deer hunting that crazy snowstorm we had, right? Or it just it was breaking trees all night and stuff. Well, this was one of those trees that fell on the outhouse, so it was like leaning up against it. So we're like, well, let's get that all cut up. We need firewood. So we cut it up, and we this one chunk was like frozen to the ground hard. So Jonathan tap, or tied his rope around it, and we had Haley's friend <laughs> riding the four wheeler, and she'd like, mm. <laughs> like pull it a little, and like, no, go, like, back up, and go, let her rip, like, rip it, oh, yes, rip it, go. And Johnny goes like, he's got safety glasses on his head, and he goes, 
puts his safety glasses on and we're like standing across from each other. She rips it. The thing comes fly, busts up out of the ground, flies through the air right at him, <laughs> lands, oh, maybe from me to you away on the He's... ground and rolls. And he kind of like goes like this. And then looks at me and starts laughing. I was like, good thing you put your safety glasses on, huh? <laughs> right. He's like, yeah, what's going right here? <laughs> Dude, he just about got small. Right. So that was exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, well, I've oh. told you that story, like, with the, the toe strap, the chain, like, with my dad getting stuck when I was a kid. Maybe. Any, that's what, like, I won't use chains. Like, I hate, like, if I can avoid it, I won't use a chain. Like, nylon strap, it's all you want. Like metal hooks, fuck that noise. It's dumb. Use straps if you can. Hate it. Why? <clears throat> because so, like when I was a kid, we had my dad's big Ford, like four sixty, fucking like one, like a monster, big ass Ford. And we were out at the lake, and so we went to we're back in the jet ski in. See, that's a better one. Get your shit together, Tyler Watson. <laughs> <laughs> you don't work there anymore. What? Tyler Watson doesn't work at the brewery. Really? He were he were some shits. How long has that been? Uh, two years, a year or two years. He patented the extra sip when he worked. Yeah, he used the one that, and they just kept it going. But he doesn't work there anymore. Okay. All right. Well, never mind then. <laughs> All right. But, I thought he was still there. No. Okay. No. Anyway. Uh, so what were we saying? Uh, your dad's chain incident. Dad's chain incident. So we got stuck back in the four-wheeler, or four-wheeler, back in the truck in to put the jet ski in the water. And sometimes at the lake, like the way the the sand and the beach and shit would be, it would look like it was okay, but then it'd be just like a little crust of like sand and shit, and then just mud underneath. Uh, and so like backed in there, coming back out, Nope. Just mm, oh, boy. just sink. And like that's a big truck. Like yeah. that's gonna take a lot to pull it out. <laughs> and especially in water and like like water's built like like yeah. It was It was getting in the cab and everything. It wasn't getting in the cab, but like the box and shit and the box. So, like, oh boy. It's probably like it was exhaust is underwater and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this dude comes along and he he's like, all right. He's like, give it a shot. And he hooks chain up on his end, hooks chain up on dad's. And he's got, I remember he's got three kids, three kids, four kids in the back, back window of his truck. And this is like I said, like the late eighties, early nineties. Um, you know, and they're sitting there like looking out the back window, like watching what's going on. And, and the other thing is to throw a coat or a jacket or something over to, to wait it. In case something goes flying, then it'll stop. But um, so he's he's yanking on this thing, and the hook snaps on Dad's end, and I mean like a fucking bullet. You know the the chunk of metal left on the bottom side of the hook that's still attached to that mm -hmm. just straight through the tailgate like like it was nothing, <laughs> just. I mean, it literally it punched a hole straight through and was just dangling inside the tailgate about this far from the top of the tailgate. Wow. Had it gone this yeah. much higher, it had gone straight through one of them kids. Like, Yeesh. like without even a, <laughs> no hesitation. So, yeah, I hate chains. Yeah, I was kind of wondering why he was using a real foot. Johnny's kind of a not connoisseur. He's not crazy. Yeah. He's crazy, but he's crazy about knots. So is my he dad. Loves tying knots. So is my dad. And uh, I just figured that's kind of why he was using it. We actually did wreck the rope. He had only had like a few strands, but I was surprised it kept going. It was fine. But yeah, it was fun. Yeah. He almost yeah. shot a red squirrel with his 44. <laughs> The stupid thing <laughs> everywhere, dude. Not going to be a whole lot of that left. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, yeah. They eat right. the bird feed and everything. They yeah. chase that. They are. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a pest. Yeah. They're a... Yeah, they're mm hard. -hmm. Oh, we hit a grouse. Okay. We hit a grouse on the way into Togo. That was funny. 
He got pretty pissed about that, actually. <laughs> it wasn't funny. I mean, it sucked. Well, I yeah. want to hit it, you know. God damn it. God damn it. It just kept swearing. <laughs> but we picked it up, and we got the, like, oh. Uh, so the graphic warning here. <laughs> to clean a grouse is not pretty. Okay. The most efficient way is not pretty at all. Pretty barbaric. I I understand this, but I mean it works. So and the bird's already dead. Mm-hmm. You know? But uh, so we taught Haley and her friend how to clean this grouse, and we we're like, okay, well you gotta grab both the feet, put it on the ground with the stomach facing up. Now put your feet on its wings as close to the body as you can, and pull. Separate it, you know, mm-hmm. it pulls all the feathers and the skin off of the breast, and then all, you have all your guts in this part. You know, you can do whatever you want with that. Yeah, and they did it. Huh? They did it. I was all surprised. Right. So, and the grouse tasted great. Yeah, but that was funny. <laughs> Got to learn sometime, I guess. I could see Haley doing it. Oh, Haley, yeah, for sure. So. But I mean, that's, you know, they're like, oh, this is so gross. How could you do that? Why would you do that? Well, it's food. Yeah. Where do you think your food comes from? Mm-hmm. Like, at least this Some gross them. died fast on accident. And yep. now we're using it. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 And it does. And it teaches that respect for life and, right. you know, right. valuing actually. Like, because, like you said, it's an experience that was cool. And turned out well, but it's still shitty. Like, oh, we killed this animal. That sucks. Right. If we had a choice, then I would mm-hmm. we wouldn't have hit yeah. it. But there's other people that would hit it and just be like, keep going. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, grab that thing, use it. Yep. You clean kill, so it's mm-hmm. fine. But to be fair, I might keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I will make sure it's dead. So, be- so it was still like flopping around. <laughs> okay. And Johnny backed up. Yeah, it was hello. like me and Morgan, Gail, Jonathan, all heading for breakfast. And he's like, God damn it. God damn it. He gets out, grabs it, throws it in the back. I can see it's still flopped. But then Morgan goes, Is it, well, is it dead? He's like, Dead enough. He's just <laughs> pissed, dude. It, was, it, 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 it died. I watched it. Yeah. It was pretty fast, actually. But still got that. <laughs> still got that twitch. Oh. <laughs> I can I can see him saying it too. <laughs> it's funny. So I got one more story about the <laughs> I, I had uh, uh, my phone charger was in their cabin, so the last day I came, I got out of my hammock and I came down and they were still in bed. I went in and I was like, I need my phone charger, and it had fallen down below the bed. And uh, Jonathan gets up and he's just in his boxers and he has to grab like a broom. To get it out, you know, <laughs> but he stands up and he goes, Oh, yuck. Oh, and Morgan goes, What? Her breath, like the dog, her breath, or what? No, my ass. <laughs> Ish. She's like, Yeah, you need to change your underwear. <laughs> and then he did, you know what he did? He looks at me and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love my family. They're <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my ass. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> nice. Oy. Yeah, it was a good weekend. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah, I got some pictures and some videos of it. So, yeah. We got a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to go here. We're going away here in a few weekends. We are? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is coming up fast. This is four, three weeks, four weeks, wow. four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. It's be fun. Little bachelor, bachelorette weekend. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. Shenanigans. Kayaks. Yeah, kayaks and paddle boards. Paddle boards and shit. So, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. The wedding is coming up fast, too. I mean, it's less right. than two months already. Yeah. We've got like three, four weeks to that weekend, and then like three or four weeks past that for the wedding. Yeah. So yeah. Oh man, I gotta get my time in or time off requests. So. I feel bad. Because, like, <laughs> they like they deny it, and then you can't right. get your time well, off. Because I'm gonna have family from across the country, right? Here, so I want to take that week off. Because I mean, we're gonna get married, then we have to do all the cleanup and everything, and then I've got family out of state. 
years. So like I wanted to spend time with them for that. And I haven't seen these people since I was eight. Eight Shit. or nine. You know. So, okay. I mean, I don't see them ever. So it's gonna take a week off for that. And then the weekend of the or the week of the fourth of July, we're gonna go to Really? We're gonna go see Halsey <laughs> at Red Rock. Oh, you're you guys are going to that? Yeah. Nice. So we got that's uh, on the seventh. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> so, like I actually remember it because I was looking at schedules around that time. Yeah, so yeah. I was going to take that week off because you already have Monday mm -hmm. off because that's I think Monday is the fourth. Yep. So, uh, yeah, this is tough. get it. But um, that'll be fun. Pan rented a Pan got us a um tiny home. Oh yeah, a little home up in the mountains. Nice. Yeah, on yeah. somebody's property, but it's like towards the back of their property or something like that. So, stay in a tiny home. Hell it's yeah, be fun. dude! You're gonna have to take some pictures because that's I would love to do that. Yeah, tiny home in the mountains in Colorado. <laughs> like, yep. Right. So yes, get me some pictures. Well, I'm sure. I'm, take a bunch of well, yeah, I'm sure. We're imagine. gonna stop. We're gonna leave. Well, because now we're not doing the Fourth of July up north, so we're gonna leave like. Maybe that Sunday or something, and then go to Deadwood, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. We'll spend the night there. Go see where Wild Bill died and all that. In fact, killed. Yep. And all that stuff. Um, and then we'll head down to Colorado. Old West Saloon. Old West Saloon. Ah, mm -hmm. trying to think of the name of the saloon where Wild Bill got shot. I don't remember, but I know well, I know fuck. what he was doing and the cards that he had in his hand. Aces and eights. Yeah. Didn't sit in his normal spot. Because somebody else refused to move. Yep. Normally he'd sit with his back to the wall. Yeah. And that was in the number number 12 saloon. Mm. I believe it's the number 12 saloon. Anyway. Shot in the back of the head and the bullet went through his head and lodged into a different dude's wrist. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. And he kept the bullet there till he died. Wow. <laughs> I did not know that. I mean, I knew the part about getting shot in the back of the head. I didn't know the right. wrist. So, I think they killed that guy. I don't. Maybe they didn't. I can't remember. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, Michael Martin Murphy, Rhymes of the Renegades, Wild Bill's Ghost Haunts no, Number Twelve Saloon. I think is the line of the song. We were Haunts talking about staying in, the, in one of the old hotels there that's supposedly super haunted. Yeah. So. Maybe we'll do that. That'd, That'd be, be cool. Kind of fun. Yeah, why not? Be a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Some one of the reviews. Go stay at like the Overlook out in Colorado for like the Shining Hotel. Oh, excuse me. One of the reviews for the hotel that Pam was looking up, that the haunted one was. Uh, it's some. It was a bad review, and it was like it's weird, and there's odd noises all night. <laughs> <laughs> if well, you're looking for a things. haunted hotel, you're like, perfect. Yeah, it's an old place. Yep. And it's haunted. So is not that what you want? Yeah. <clears throat> right. It's just some people are morons. Yeah. <laughs> why, why is this a one-star review? That's five stars, bud. That's yeah, exactly what it's supposed to be. Yep. So, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Figure it out. Right. Yeah, figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah. But then that would be the last trip until hunting way out in October. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of time. Though. But you don't get married every year. It's a fact. So. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be the, we'll, we'll say that's the honeymoon, you know. Yeah. They got to approve that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All oh, those. So you move and you're saying, no. sound like a, yeah, but that's, that's all my stuff. Yeah. Fuck. Oh uh, yeah. So what's going on on my end? <laughs> so since January, my divorce trial after like a year, um, I had everything ready, pretty much ready last February. Um, and ended up having that trial a month ago. Uh, the day you got your wisdom teeth out. Oh, um, yeah. It was the same day you got your wisdom teeth out, March 18th. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was a, and again, just some of the things that are still like pending, still waiting for the, uh, uh, the divorce order from the judge for that as to, you know, what's going to be decided with custody and parenting time and 
all the financial shit and uh, like just kind of all of that. Um, there were a lot of things that we kind of ironed out uh, during the course of that trial. It was supposed to go from 9 a.m. to like it was slated to last like all day. We actually wrapped just before lunch. Um, so it was about two and a half hours, two hours, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, yeah, like I said, we're going to wait and see what comes of it here. Uh, he has 90 days to get his ruling in. That is as of when he took the case under advisement on April 4th. So he has until July 4th to kind of, uh, let us know what he has decided. Um, I, I guess I could say some of the things that I did, I chose to push, uh, even for full custody, um, for various reasons, but it's, it ended up being one of those things. I'm not going to get that. Like, I know I'm not going to get that, but I took the like shoot for the stars approach and like, hopefully land somewhere in the middle. So hopefully, um, uh, 50, 50 custody is what comes of it. Um, that would be like my ideal. And we're going to kind of wait and see what happens with that. Uh, but yes, there were a lot of things that he was just not very impressed with. Um, I'll say it like on her end, uh, and some things. Yeah. And I guess without getting too, into too many details, I will say she acted as honestly and as honorably as you might have expected. I guess let's just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Read into that what you will. Right. Um, so, and thankfully the judge was able to see through a lot of it and a lot of the things that were said. Um, you could tell he just got this look like, what the fuck? Like, are you serious? <laughs> and there was no... Um, one thing, so what I'll do is I'll share one piece of evidence, um, from that day. So she, my ex tried to, uh, claim that I was abusive and to that end, some of the evidence that she provided was, uh, one piece was a screenshot of episode five of this podcast um, Lil Cats Up's episode five, part two, <clears throat> that was out the end of last or beginning of last August. And in the description of that episode, uh, it reads something that we, uh, Amanda and I, talking about our children having been baptized. We learned that our children were baptized this past weekend and that we were barred from viewing or attending. That screenshot of that description of that episode was submitted by her as evidence of me being abusive because she has asked that I don't speak about her or the kids like on the podcast at all, which to be fair, we really don't all that much. Like we talk about more of like the impact and we really don't get into like personal shit of theirs that much. Right. Um, but she took that because she has said, essentially, she doesn't want even mentioned on the podcast that because we talked about our children being baptized and us being barred from attending, that was me being abusive. Yeah. Too the judge, so yeah, <laughs> the judge saw otherwise. He did not agree with it. That was abusive. Uh, so, um, yeah, it was just a. I don't know. It was kind of a shit show. Uh, but it, I don't know. I think it went well for me. Yeah. So, and again, we'll wait to see. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> there were some, some things that the judge even uh, that my ex and I had discussed and as much as agreed upon that in some of the questions and trying to determine some of the issues like himself that he is, was kind of like, well, I don't want to say that he basically kind of like prompted me to be like, Hey, you know what? You should ask for a little bit more here. <laughs> but he basically was like, well, here's what would normally happen. And I was like, Oh, 
okay, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think, who knows, maybe he was able to see that she was trying to pull some dirty shit and was like, I guess we'll go to bat a little bit. I don't know. But who knows? It's, again, <clears throat> I may be overly optimistic, and July 4th could roll around, and I may get nothing. Yeah. I have no idea. So I'm kind of just, you know, hoping for the best, preparing for whatever it is. And I kind of figure there's, you know, some options based on whatever is decided. And, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever happens, it'll be fine. And I don't know. Life goes on. Yeah. 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 Right. What, what do you do? do? But it's uh so there's that. Uh work. Um busy with work. School, busy with school. Uh, I am down to seven and a half months. I think I have seven and a half months of school left. Damn. So, yeah. Uh, I guess I should... I have seven and a half months of coursework, and then I have six months of internship. But that'll just be working, and it'll be working in with the company that I'm already working for. So, like, essentially, I've got seven and a half months of coursework, and then I'll have six months of internship work before then they go oh, okay now you can graduate like i'll be done and just working for the last six months of my program yeah. oh well whatever yeah. so around this time next year may next year i should be officially graduated um but i'll be done with coursework here november december right on dude yeah i can't wait for that to be done <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, no kidding <laughs> better ride though that's pretty cool yeah um it was yeah actually it was very cool one of the things that i did that was that it, it meant a lot to me from like a personal standpoint a professional standpoint an educational standpoint like just all around it was like a big like it was a big win it was a big deal for me um i uh, i gave a presentation uh for work at a we like we have to get like a certain number of hours for licensure and so we, you know, you have like continuing education and stuff and, you know, we've got to do those. And I presented at uh, a training day for my company, um, a presentation on how to deal with or how to work with victims of cult and religious trauma. And it went amazing. Like it went very well. Uh, like one person cried, like uh -huh. <laughs> one person, uh, you know, this person asked like, can we get part two? They come to our meetups and I work with them. So, you know them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my boss actually asked myself and that person said, I want you two to put together a group. So, um, and we're kind of like, well, we do that already. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah. uh, no, she's actually talking like clinical. Um, <clears throat> would like me and this coworker of mine to put together like a clinical group setting where we can hold it in office we can actually provide group support mm -hmm. to victims of cult and religious trauma with the aim of getting it approved through DHS as like continuing education curriculum to where I would be able to go to other companies and train other therapists with other practices and other mental health workers in how to deal with those victims. So, right on, man. So, yeah. So, like, I am. What I one of my goals has been to uh, ultimately become an educator for like you know cult advocacy and and teaching that whole side of things and how to work with those victims. So like this is just like one step in that you know in that direction of being able to actually start serving in the role of an educator for you know helping ones that you know, deal with this and ones that work with uh, those victims because. Um, somewhat tangential to that, I started therapy back up. Um, been yeah, yeah, you didn't know that. No, I didn't. Know so that. yeah, uh, 
last talking about it. Yep. <clears throat> so yeah, and it took a little time to get everything, get the ball rolling and everything. But uh, I started back up last Thursday. Oh, okay. So had yeah, I had my second second session with a new therapist yesterday. Um wow. What in the world? <sighs> Plumbing. Mm. That's Brandon. That's Brandon taking a shower, probably. Oh, yeah. We're gonna blame Pam though. Well, he needs to shower after after that business. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Disgusting. Gross. <laughs> um Yeah. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, it turned. Yeah, it was super cool. I was very excited about it, and yeah. So I would like, I would like to start, you know, working on a part two to it, getting a little bit more in depth. Um, I don't. know. It'll take time. Right. Well, we need. How's this for a segue? We need more material, and we also are need to do more of these. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a lot more people that want to do tell their stories. That's true. So yeah, we kind of got to kick it into gear here. And we do actually. Well, do more recordings, but yeah. So the day after you got, or was it the day that you got your was no, it was the day before, day after you got your wisdom teeth out. Uh, we were supposed to record an episode. Or was that week? No, it was that week, wasn't it? No, no, it was the next. It was the week after. Yeah. So this was supposed to have been the last week of March. We had one scheduled that we had to, you know, we're having to reschedule now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess that kind of brings us to, like, honestly, somewhat of a wrap. Because, <laughs> because like, that so much shit has happened, like, in the last three months. But there's so much of it that I can't really even talk about. Talk about. Yeah. And so that kind of just covers, like, a lot of the high points we're doing more with um we're trying to do with more meetups more support group shit um so we're gonna have some more of that coming up but uh yeah it's just um we've got stories that people want to tell coming up we'll start doing some more of those we're gonna do one next weekend um <clears throat> whether it's a Finding, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whether be. whether it's a finding paradise per se or not, or it's a celebratory. <laughs> yes, for the um, this the holidays. Yes, <laughs> yes. So next, if you catch my drift. yeah. So next week we'll be recording our four twenty three special. They don't need to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have one of my buddies joining. Yes, us from Orange County, California. Mm -hmm. He's in the industry. So it should be fun. He's it's going to be a, yeah. Funny. It's going to be a very cool conversation. Yeah. Um, so we've got that. Um, yeah, the one that we're going to record a couple weeks ago. We've got. Uh, I know of at least two or three more um, XJ Dub stories that want to do theirs. Um, I did. Um, so I did. Actually, no, so that's something that I guess. Yeah, you know what? There, there has been some other stuff I've been doing. So let's let's, let's talk about some of that. Mm -hmm. I've been going to a lot of shows lately. Uh, I've been going to like a fair amount of concerts, so that's been a lot of fun. Uh, and I will say, I, I had kind of a realization after a concert uh, a few weeks ago. Like, yeah, and it's kind of like, and I'm like, you know what? I've loved live, like I've loved music just in general, like my whole life, and I've always wanted to play music, and that kind of got somewhat hijacked and taken away from me when I was a kid, and like I never really got to pursue that to the extent that I wanted to. Like, and it pisses me off, like, it seems like like band is cool for like J Dub kids and stuff. Like it wasn't when I was a kid. Like we could not join band. Like we couldn't do anything of that sort. Like was it because it was extra? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so like I was never able, you know, allowed to do any of that. Um, you know, like was never allowed to really play instruments and stuff because you're always busy doing other shit. Like <laughs> so, it's like it just wasn't a, a thing. Um, but going to like I've been going to a fair amount of concerts and stuff lately, and I realized like this is kind of something that's always been important to me, and I've always kind of just been, I've always kind of been like the punk rock guy, and always wanted to be the guy at the punk rock shows, and like that's just kind of, and so I've kind of like somewhat embraced that a little bit, and I mean she's like starting to get some 
tattoos a little bit and like mm -hmm. piercing my shit up a little and <laughs> so, right <laughs> you know, making up yeah. for some lost time yeah. um but but speaking of that and like the punk rock shows and stuff like that i went and saw um escape from the zoo uh last month which is side project for jesse from days and days and his wife veronica and their man so yeah. and i we met jesse after the show back in october and i've kept in touch with him since then and him and i've you know we've been communicating and texting back and forth and stuff and so actually it's funny one of their songs uh him and i were texting back and forth i was talking about um playing harmonica like i picked up harmonica started playing that a little bit and i told him i was like hey i'm their song uh, they got a song called learning curve it's great and i was like i've just been fucking around with harmonica on that trying to play that he's like oh shit he's like like he's like i bet that sounds awesome <laughs> and he's like well i guess we'll find out next show so like next show he's like yeah he's like jump on stage bring the harmonica yeah so fuck it <laughs> you know and he indicated that he might be interested in recording the podcast even so like yeah i mean he's obviously got an interesting story <laughs> right yeah. so yeah. <laughs> uh you know from you know drugs and addiction to clean living yeah cleanish but, true success story yeah so no that would be a lot of fun um we'll see how that goes um concerts coming up and go see spos here in a couple of like, like it was funny you you're like they're still around like he it's he it's a it's a dude but he, only one guy yeah it's yeah his name i is, only know that motherfucker i'm awesome all, all i know yeah. him. Like, yeah. Yeah. him yeah him <laughs> but yeah ryan peters is the ryan dude's name peters. but <laughs> no he uh and it's funny because i let, like the it's actually the spos is still alive question mark tour so like yeah i'm gonna go see that here uh Looking forward to that here in Where's July. That? Varsity Theater, maybe. Oh, might be at Varsity. Somewhere in the somewhere in the metro. Yeah, July fourteenth. July fourteenth. Mm -hmm. Um, seeing Amigo the Devil in August. Yeah, that's gonna be a blast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be a good time. I, it's kind of hard for me to like some of his songs. I like, but to just listen to them are kind. They're kind of abrasive. I'll say that. Oh, yeah. And they're just a little much because his lyrics are like, oh, my God, dude, seriously. Yep. But to see him live would be a totally different mm -hmm. thing. Like, I would love to see that guy. Yeah. Where is he playing? Uh, That is going to be the Armory. Oh. Maybe the Armory. Mm. I can't. No, it's funny. Like, I so a friend of mine that I went to see Lost Dog with. Like last minute, she was like, she used to cut my hair. Uh, her and her boyfriend, she was like, You gonna go? Like, got extra ticket. Okay. And so, saw Lost Dog with um, Resonant Rogues and Jason Day West opening. Oh, that yeah. like, that was awesome. And I was like, Man, I gotta ask, like, I wanna ask Jason Day West about the harmonica on uh, Lone Wolf. And we pull in and we park and we get out and we start walking and like we aren't out of the parking lot before Jason Day West is walking out of the back of the venue. Mm -hmm. And like we run into him in the back alley. We're like, oh shit, hey, what's up? And like sit there bullshitting with him before we even go inside. Yeah. Um, awesome show. Um, but yeah, so that was like, I don't know, that's kind of my kind of embracing that. Like I'm going to probably spend more time at shows and I don't right. dude concerts are the best yeah you can't beat them yeah so um so did that and doing some climbing so that was one of my goals for this year i was like i want to i want to pick up like climbing this spring so i went and did some bouldering last friday night after work so yeah i got so now that i i know 100 percent that my knee is fine yeah i can climb again so that is one of my goals also this year is to get back into climbing. I got a couple of dudes at work that want to come climb on the garage wall. Yep. I'm used to it. And I was going to take them out to an actual boulder yep. this summer, which is, it's a hard boulder. It's not an easy climb. But I mean, the more the merrier, you know, if they're interested in it. 
the one son of a bitch is lanky as fuck, so I'm <laughs> going to be jealous straight away. I know he'll do fine. Right, yeah. The other one, yeah, I mean, he'll be fine. It just depends on how much you want to stick with it. But he's like kind of like my build, stubby. <laughs> you know <laughs> right. so we'll see yeah but i, I told amanda i was like for being like old fat and out of shape like i was surprisingly like <laughs> i was surprisingly able to climb like pretty well yeah so it's a great way to work out it's so much what, more fun well yeah and, and so like weights. well yeah and that's the thing it's like i've i don't want to go to a gym like i don't want to do that shit but like i would like to get in more like in better shape so i've kind of been like all right suck it up get a fucking gym membership or do something. Well, you can, you can spend 50, 75, hundred bucks a month on a gym membership. Easy. Mm. Like, so then, you know, considering doing something like that. And then I go to this bouldering gym last week. And so they have the climbing and then they have like a gym gym, like in the back yeah. and they've got saunas and they've got, locker rooms and showers and they've got like they've got like a seating area up above and they've got like they have classes and stuff and most place most gyms like if you want to take like the yoga classes it's like an extra 25 bucks for the yoga class like this like all the classes are included like you pay for a fee and you everything in in the building is now covered like 65 bucks a month yeah it's not bad at so all. i'm like well shit like that's what i should do do that go climb two, three nights a week. And I'm thinking like half hour, 45 minutes of climb, 15 minutes, like in the gym, just to like finish wearing myself out. And then 15, 20 minutes in the sauna, go home and just. Oh yeah. Oh. You sleep hard after climbing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially bouldering. Bouldering is tough. I don't know. It's, it's a weird mix. If you're like top roping or like climbing, I mean, you have larger walls, so you're climbing for longer, you know, during that time period. But bouldering, a lot of times, you're like fucking backwards <laughs> like this, and you're like, oh god, I gotta. Uh huh. You know, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. It's well, it is. Easy. It's that full body workout. I don't right. want to. Like, I don't want to be in a gym <laughs> doing this, yeah. focusing on that muscle right there, like right. that one. Like, I'm ripping the shit out of that one right now. Great. Or I'm climbing, and I'm working every muscle between here and there. Right. <laughs> like, so. The muscles that matter, mm -hmm. too. Not right. Just for a show. Like, exactly. These muscles help you every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I, you know. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully doing some more of that. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess... Uh, I had my first harvest. I could talk about that. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. My first harvest uh -huh. from my uh, uh, glorified hydroponic system. Yep. I still don't have fish. They're all dead. Yeah. But it's getting towards the end, so I'm going to restart. But I harvested five of my plants. I didn't weigh it or anything, but I had. Oh, I probably could have filled up six, seven, maybe up to ten gallon bags. Jesus. Okay. One gallon bags full of stuff. I gave some of it away. We couldn't eat it fast enough. There's still some left out there, <laughs> and it's fine. Yep. I think that <clears throat> trick of pulling the plant out, wrapping the roots around the base, I think that really helps. Yep. But leaving it all intact also. Mm -hmm. like Break it off when you want to eat it. Break, break your pieces of lettuce or whatever off and then wash them. You don't really need to wash them, but I, I mean, they might have dust or something. Yeah, it's just air. <laughs> right. It's indoor. So, that went really well. It all tasted great. Me and you had a salad. We had salad right away. Yep. I've got four plants left to go. One of so yeah, my one tower, the um, tube that brings the water to the top of the tower, plugged up with algae. So those plants for probably less than a day didn't get any water. So I came downstairs. They're all like this. Roots are a little wilty. Dry. <laughs> God damn it. So I moved them to the other tower that was now the one that didn't get water. <laughs> That's why I moved them in the first place. Now I had tons, the most of water. Right. So I moved them back over there. Looks like they're doing okay today. The one I was worried about was the spinach because I really want to try that spinach. It looks like I got a bunch of it. That one's doing all right. Iceberg is in, but I don't really care about the iceberg. It's fine. So 
I'm going to harvest them this weekend, I think, because that whole system needs to be completely cleaned out. I need to change the water in the tank again because that's got algae grown in it since there's no animals, no fish, no nothing in there. Right. It's just water. And then the tubing is all full of algae. I got to clean all that out. So my new method is going to be I will, I'm going to go get bait fish, like shiners, from a guy that catches them locally so they're not transferred everywhere, you know, transported any, everywhere. They're not on their last leg, yeah. fresh. And then I'll get some ghost shrimp to help with the algae, whatever. People tell me they don't eat algae, but I don't know, man. I've had snapping turtles, and those fuckers, they gunk up a tank fast. And I throw some ghost shrimp in there, they clean it all up. So I don't know if I really believe that. And they'll yeah. be green. You can see through them. They're ghost shrimp. You can see all their guts are green. They're <laughs> eating the algae. Right. Oh, whatever. That's a different story. Yeah. I'll do that, and then I'm going to do two plants, two different species of plants, and I'll fill all ten pods up with just those two. So, yeah, five and five. So that way they're ready to harvest all at the same time so I can harvest them, take it all apart, clean it all out, get all the algae out of the tubes, start it over. And then, I mean, if I got ten plants ready to harvest all at the same time, that's a lot of green. Mm -hmm. So... That'll be this Saturday's project along with yard work and everything. But that, and I want to get a microgreen system set up. Yeah. Because I think that's that's my main thing. If I can figure out how to monetize microgreens efficiently, mm -hmm. grow them efficiently, sell them efficiently, right? I don't need to do construction anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can work for myself. Uh huh. And I love growing plants, so... I mean, it's kind of a win-win. Yep. I could do it in my basement. Right. <laughs> right. You know? Yep. So do it in your basement, then harvest them, take them to the farmer's market. So Or the, or get into restaurant, whatever, you know, supply, right. whatever you end up doing. The food co-op. Yep. Right down the road. Yep. They'll buy microgreens all yep. day. So that's my next endeavor. Let's figure out how to do, do all that. So, yeah. And I think it's... I don't know. It gives me a boost of confidence knowing that my first endeavor was a success. Right. Like it, it produced more than I thought it would. <laughs> right. I thought it was just going to be like, it was just crapshoot. Like, fuck right. it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you know, all this great green mm -hmm. to eat and whatever. Yeah. Like, worked out really well. Hell yeah. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a good salad. <clears throat> the one I had. It tasted clean. Mm hmm. You wouldn't know it was grown in a basement. I didn't tell you. <laughs> right. You know, like, this was good lettuce. This was basement salad. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what else? Um, what's been happening? I guess in J-Dub world, they're going back to in-person, all that. Yeah, this is a J-Dub podcast, so we should probably talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Did I? We don't have much to talk about. We did get second, a I felt like that was invite. missing there. I did not. Memorial, which is happening right now. As we speak, probably. No. Well, I mean, they might be. It's probably. not time for sundown yet because they can't be passing stuff, but they're probably just getting ready for usually 7.30 or 8 o'clock they're starting. So right. I'm guessing they are beginning the memorial now-ish. Yeah. Thanks, Jesus. We had a better good Friday than you did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, that dude got nailed. You considered crashing, crashing it in the cities. Not crashing no, so much. I, 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 I so since I've left, um, it's like I left right when COVID start, like when right when it started hitting, like then like days, like it was like then, and everything went to virtual, and so they've pretty much been a virtual religion since I left and now that they're back in person and now i'm seeing things a hundred percent from another perspective like i just kind of want to well, yeah i get that i want to just go sit down and be like i don't know if i will yeah no yeah you wouldn't be able to make it through the whole thing yeah 
That might be a good closure moment for you. Could be. If you did go somewhere where they just, they don't even know you, they're not going to bother you. Yeah. You know? If you go around here, you get kicked out right away. They'll fucking surround you. Maybe. Yeah. They would for me, I bet you. Yeah. If I went to Mankato, the elders would stand around me and sh- fucking show for me out. Even though I wouldn't, I would ever. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't really I'm get not, the yeah. whole disrupting meetings thing. Like I don't, mm-hmm. I don't really understand. I get if it makes you feel better, yeah. if it helps you heal, then do it. It's not like you're hurting anything or anybody. Yeah, you might be hurting the cause a little bit because I think so. Yeah, I mean now you're just kind of belligerently disrupting, playing into their narrative. Thing. Right, exactly. You're playing into the narrative. So on that. In that aspect, I don't really think it's wise. Yeah. But, I mean, like I said, if it, if it keeps you from committing suicide or something like that, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Before, go and disrupt a meeting. Yeah, if you need to go <laughs> yell, yeah, if you need to go yell about someone right. yeah, covering up child abuse in the hall, go for it. It doesn't really make me think you're cool or nothing, but. Yep. You know. Teach their own. Right. Teach their own. Teach them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I told you, yeah, I don't think I'll ever. It's a foot in the hall again. But I've had uh, that closure. I've, I've been there yeah. and I've been like, this is fucked. I, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done with this. Yeah, and I think that could be it. Like, it might just be that. Like, it must just a morbid curiosity. Because, like, I'm also interested in going to, like, other religious services. Like, checking out, like, other religions and stuff. Not with the goal or aim at all of joining a religion. Like, n- No. I can't see myself ever joining a religion <laughs> like ever that like that's not me but I still find religion fascinating I think it's interesting it is interesting so like like the I don't know I don't know, I guess the inquisitive side of me is just curious to see how other groups and other religions do things differently I guess mm-hmm. yeah yeah there's no harm in that yeah and we'll see whether or not. I mean, I did. I attended online two different, like two services last spring, for like from a Lutheran church. Yeah. Uh, I did it for a school assignment, but yeah. but yeah, like I would be interested to check out like something else. Like I was interested in potentially like a Good Friday service or going to the memorial or going to like an Easter service or something on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So, well, have fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do it. This was, like, I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about it. And I'm going to ultimately do nothing. So Instead. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah J-Dub world, I, I don't even... It's so, it's weird that we have a J-Dub podcast. I don't even keep up to date on it anymore. It's I don't even bit. know the last time I watched a Cedars video. Or, he is bit. back. I saw that. Yeah. So that's cool. Maybe I should watch one and see like what scoop is but yeah i don't know what all came of all of that and i don't care yeah uh, i just like okay, okay. <laughs> whatever i haven't listened to a young podcast I I haven't listened... anything yeah uh, i know it i don't know well for me life's just been too busy with other shit that i just haven't been able to right. there have been some things that have popped up that i've seen that have been interesting that i've kind of you know checked them out a little bit but yeah, I have not really like dug in or examined anything for a while. All right. Well, I'm just trying to figure out like the balance. Yeah. You know, I've been out for well, I'd say eight years now. I don't I don't remember like my last meeting. Well, I remember my last meeting, but I don't remember when it was. But I just there's like a a healing process and then there's a scratching the scab off <laughs> yeah. deal there too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like what? Like I it, I'm I'm healed by now. Like the parent thing is still rough. Mm-hmm. But after my letter, uh, things have gotten a little better. Like I just I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. You know? And right. that is freeing. That it's sad that it, it occurred that it had to be that way. But it's nice. Mm-hmm. And so I'm kind of just like I don't, I don't need to keep ripping that scab open. Yeah. You know, it's in my past. It's part of who I am. 
I'll continue to get marks for every five years on my ear that I've been out. And I'll always talk to somebody about it if they want to talk about it. But for me personally, it's like, mm, yeah, I already know I'm right. <laughs> I don't need yeah. people to continue to reassure me of that. I know I've made the right decision. Mm -hmm. So, right. Just live my life now. Yeah. You know. Right. Yeah, and again, it's it. I don't debate there's... J Dubs on a regular basis, so I don't need to be <laughs> right. caught up on everything. You right. Know? Like it's not my life. Right. Yeah. And I see. Yeah. And it's obviously there's the balance there between between that and then and again, like for me and us to a certain extent. I mean, like we do this as a means of like supporting other people too. So oh, like, yeah. so it's, Oh yeah. I, I want to uh, be doing this. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying like, there's, there's that constant balance of like, how do you, how do you continue to do something and invest yourself without losing yourself in it? Right. So, which to be fair, we've done well. Like, I think, you know, this is, this is something that's been, fairly casual it's been casual it's been beneficial it's been helpful mm -hmm. you know we've gotten like we've benefited from it greatly like, <laughs> like oh, yeah, it's been absolutely. it's been hugely therapeutic for us we've gotten so many kind messages from other people that it's like oh okay i guess it's not just us other people like dig yeah, it too yeah. so like cool like, like we I appreciate said, that yeah i think i said it in the past episode we've already accomplished our goal yeah as long as one person help one person yeah fuck it we've so. made it we're yeah. done. Yeah. Now it's up to you guys. Yeah. No, it's not. We got to <laughs> we'll stick around. We'll yeah, up. we got to keep up. Uh, yeah. We're having fun. It, it We're going to keep fun. doing it. I didn't convert my basement to a podcast studio. Right. The intention of stopping after right. a year. Right. We'll keep it rolling. <laughs> yeah. So, Absolutely. but I don't know. That's, yeah. Uh, there, There's more we could probably talk about, but probably shouldn't. And then there's, I don't know. I don't know what else. I just know I've got to pee real bad. Got to, got to take one. Yeah. Uh, what time is it? Shit, it's about 8 o'clock. Yeah, I'm getting ready to wrap it up. We both talked about, like, just exhausted. Tired. So. The winter has been rough. I had seasonal effectiveness disorder by, like, February. Yeah. I really have not been social. <laughs> Sociable. Yeah. I just don't. I don't know. <laughs> um, now that the sun's coming back, weather's getting nicer and all that stuff, like they're coming back. Yeah. Once and back. Yeah. But man, it's set on early this year. Yeah. Yeah. Not like, well, I mean, like, not like depressed, depressed, but just like banking. Yeah, you're just like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just don't want to do nothing. Yeah, I hear that. Oh, actually, I didn't tell you. Did I tell you about the hostess versus Little Debbie thing we did? So we finally <laughs> did the hostess versus Little Debbie blindfolded taste test. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so we got uh, all the ones that they make that are kind of similar. Yeah. And then me and three, well, Brando, our buddy Nick, and our other buddy Opie, we all put blindfolds on, and we made brackets and Pam fed us portions <laughs> of each of these. So it would be like... <laughs> Here's birthday cake, little Debbie. Here's birthday cake, hostess. You know, like, but she wouldn't tell us what they were. Yeah, wouldn't tell us the flavor. We just rate them one ten. Mm -hmm. so, so I've always been a little Debbie's guy. In my personal bracket, little Debbie's came out on top. All right. Um, Brandon's bracket, little Debbie's came out on top. And I think even on Opie's, but Nick fucked us over. <laughs> he thought he was eating a Swiss or uh. A ding dong, I think, is the hostess version of a Swiss cake roll. He thought, yeah. So he was—he he thought he was eating a ding dong, but he was eating a Swiss cake roll. Gave it a one, just mm. tanked little Debbie. So yes. the overall hostess came out on top, but I don't <laughs> accept that as a victory. Little Debbie's is better. Yeah, I'll buy little Debbie's every time. Not that hostess is bad. I, I fucking like hostess too. I'm a little Debbie but guy. The problem with this is we. I mean, basically, we ate five <laughs> right. Little Debbie Hostess treats back to back. Yeah. That fucks your stomach up fast, man. You yeah. think you like them, eat five of them in a row. Right. Like, oh, my God. This sucks. But, yeah, the, the actual problem is we – it was a tower like this, and we still have stuff left. So I've been eating Hostess and Little Debbie's for the past like three weeks. <laughs> nice. And that is hell on your guts. You got you got nutter butter you got nutter butters up there? Uh uh. 
No, because there's peanut butter no, bars, nut, there nutty nutty butter bars. A, like a ice, all right. Alternative yeah. or whatever. Yeah, all right. Because so that's the best little Debbie nutty bars. Mm, no, they, oh, I'm not dissing them. Yeah. They're great. All right, what's the best little Debbie? Mm, I mean, Swiss cake rolls are just a classic. It's pretty good. Oatmeal cream pie is a winner. Oatmeal cream pies are pretty good. Oh, little uh, zebra cakes. Zebra cakes have got to be the best. Oh, that zebra cake's pretty good. Yeah. God damn good, man. Yeah. Star crunches are really good, too. Uh, yeah. No. I think the star crunch is the best bang for your buck, because they're actually, like, thick. Like, they're sustenance. Like caramely. Yeah, so you can, like, I bought one on the... It's you know, almost hard to eat a star crunch sometimes, though. Sometimes. Not most of the time, though. I'm all about, the, <laughs> I'm all about that nutty bar. That's nutty not, bars are good. I got any this one. I don't know. Swiss but cake I, rolls good. I don't think I have a favorite. I would probably have to put. I would probably have to put zebra cakes up at the top though. I had a zebra cake I a got, while. I got history with zebra cakes. Yeah. Oh shit, you! Yeah. I'm gonna give you two at a time. Oof. They're big, you know. I had a zebra cake in a long time. But I think the one that ranked the highest out of the whole thing was the uh, birthday cake cupcake. I think that was Hostess. Okay. That was... No, I know that was Hostess. That was fucking bomb. Yeah. The birthday cake cupcakes. Oh, man, are those good. All right. Everybody ranked <laughs> Like, that's the winner? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, grab a couple. All right. I'm taking them with me, then. Oh, they're all gone. I you them. motherfucker. What do you think was the first to go? All right. Probably Shit. the best one. <laughs> God. Yeah. How are you, you can't even like choose and drink it now to finish. Now it's smashed. <laughs> and I can't do that. I don't have a hat. It's going to hurt. Uh oh, you don't have a hat. I'm just in the car. Anyways, well, cheers, <laughs> buddy. Cats up nine it's in the books. Uh, and we'll be back again next week. We'll have more coming up. Yeah. Uh, we need to, where's the thing? Get the cheers. Love you guys. Bye. See you later. Yay.